safety. Over 2,000 men work for Homestake. The miners work in two shifts, which are rotated. Changes in hours for every man. At Homestake, safety is a first consideration. Helmets of light material tougher than steel. Work lamps with a battery to keep them lighted for eight hours. Steel-toed shoes with spiked soles for safety. But above all, it is the thorough understanding of their job and an unfailing observance of safety practices on the part of the men themselves that have brought the Homestake record to its remarkably low accident rate. Prospecting, shaft sinking, drifting, raising, cross-cutting, diamond drilling, all preliminary to actual mining of the ore. Here's the air-driven diamond drill outlining the gold-bearing rock. Gold ore is mined by two methods, the shrinkage stope method without timber and the square set method with timber. These miners are climbing into a stope from which the ore is being removed by the shrinkage method. Shrinkage stope mining consists of breaking ore away from solid rock. As the roof of the opening or stope becomes higher, the miners use the broken ore as a platform on which to work. Loose rock hanging overhead is pried off with long steel bars. Miners call this barring down. Pneumatic drills bite deep into the tough, hard ore to make holes for blasting. Ten feet into solid rock, every day 3,000 steel drills go into the mine. Every day 3,000 steel bits are taken out for sharpening. Prying down loose rock, drilling holes deep into the ore, and loading the holes for blasting require an eight-hour working cycle. Three million sticks of dynamite every year, one million blasting caps to set off a million blasts for nearly a million and a half tons of ore mined annually in the Homestake mine. The blasting is done at the end of the day. Out go the tools and out go the men to a safe place far from the blast. They light the fuses, the smoke curls up. It's all over until another shift repeats the cycle. When the shrinkage stope is mined up to a height of 125 feet, the chamber is filled with broken ore, which must be drawn through chutes into one-ton cars. Strong timber planking and steel guards protect the loaders from flying ore. One ton of ore to a car, 20 cars to a train, 20 tons of solid ore and not a flake of gold in sight. Locomotives powered by electricity, locomotives powered by compressed air, all run on tracks from all points underground, run regularly on a complete railway system, 80 miles of steel track to carry equipment, materials, and gold ore. Ore mined by the square set method consists of timbering to take out the ore which was left in place to support the roof and side walls during shrinkage stope mining. These men are working under the pillar you saw in the picture a moment ago. The process is the same here as in the shrinkage stope method. Drill, blast, and remove the ore. Water runs through a rifle drilled hole in the center of the drill steel. The water does three jobs, cools, lubricates, and prevents dust. Down goes the ore to the loading level below, and what punishment that timber takes. It has to be strong to stand that pounding. One foot square, tough timber from the Black Hills. This model shows you what the mine actually looks like. A massive underground structure of sturdy timber. The higher up the miners drill and blast away, the farther down the ore falls. The miners go up and the ore comes down. In this subterranean cavern are supplies ready for use. Timber for extending the square set structure. Tools, drills and extra equipment. Standing by, on the job for the time it is needed. Air for power and air for help. Every minute of every day, 500,000 cubic feet of fresh air go into the mine and 500,000 cubic feet come out. Clean, fresh air every minute of the day for every man underground. These men are working in a heading. 
a dead end away from the main drifts and cross cuts of the mine. But they get plenty of clean air through canvas or galvanized iron ventilating pipes. 4,000 feet underground, but still there is air for the miners and air for power. But why air for power? To drive 500 air drills, 38 air locomotives, small ventilating fans and other equipment. Where does it all come from? Why, it comes from here. These great compressors running day and night furnish high pressure air for many machines. Water for spraying to keep down the dust. Water from sand used in filling worked out shrinkage stopes. Water from the earth. Water for the drills. 600 gallons of water pumped from the mine each minute or enough for a city of 20,000 people. And it all has to go someplace. But where's the gold? Let's look for it. That's funny, there's none to be seen. It's there all right, but in minute quantities. Four tenths of an ounce to a ton of rock. The ore is hoisted at night. This skip is filled with eight tons of ore, and there it goes. 25,000 pounds of ore and steel at 2,500 feet per minute. All of the new timber used in the mine is lowered through shafts. The old and broken timber is hoisted to the surface. More than a thousand miners are lowered and hoisted through the shafts every day. This heated tunnel leads directly from the shaft to a modern change house. The miners pass from the shaft to this room without going outside. Here, modern facilities guard against sudden changes in temperature, safety precautions on the surface as well as underground. Here's the gold ore again, and what a beating is in store for that rock. The ore is on its way now to the gyratory crusher the first of a series of crushing machines. No one machine can do the job, so the Simons Crusher now breaks the rocks down to about two inch size, like this. It takes power and plenty of it. Two inch pebbles from chunks of solid rock, but it's only the beginning. From the crusher to the stamp mill, 180 stamps, each with a falling weight of 1,550 pounds. 300,000 tons of water are used every 24 hours in the process to reduce the ore to a fineness sufficient for the removal of the gold. 